Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released the Mac OS Ventura 13.3.1 update. And you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, didn't Apple just release 13.3 last week? They did, but this is a really big and important Friday release security update, including bug fixes, and we're gonna go over and find out what's new next. There was some news earlier this week about iOS 16.4.1 possibly coming soon, and it did. It hit today also, and iPad OS 16.4.1, but there was no other updates for tvOS, audioOS, or watchOS, and there was no associated updates for macOS Monterey or Big Sur, but there was a Safari update, 16.4.1, that is included in, in Ventura. It's actually labeled 16.4 with a different build version. We'll see that in a minute, but it is available for macOS Monterey and Big Sur as a separate download and software update. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air and we're going to go into the software update and we can already see the Mac OS Ventura update 13.3.1 available. If we click on more information here, one bug fix we're going to notice right away is that I do not need to click on the Mac OS Ventura any longer. I showed you that we needed to click on this because this was blank before. Now you can see what the update is without doing an additional click. So all we need to do is click install now and as you can see, it's a very small update from 13.3 that the machine is on now. The You'll get the smallest update when you make the smallest jump, but if you're on like 13.1, for example, it's definitely gonna be a lot bigger because all the fixes are included from the previous software updates. So we'll click on install now and we'll get the download started. We'll type in our administrator password. And there we go. And we're gonna time this for the preparation time to see how long it takes to prep and see how long it takes to install the update. Okay, we are back up and this is the fastest update that Ventura has ever seen. And you can see here in the results on how long it took to prepare and how long the actual installation took when it restarted to the black screen in the progress bar. It only took four minutes to prepare the update after it downloaded. And it only took four minutes to install with a total of eight minutes start to preparing to finish the install the update. And you can see how long it took to install the larger 13.3 update, 18 minutes. And then you can see 13. 13.2 was 10 minutes, and this is definitely the, by far the fastest one. Apple can get these installations done and installed really quickly. There was a lot of people asking, why wasn't this a rapid security response update from Apple to fix these security issues? And McCola called this out, who is the co-developer of Open Core Legacy Patcher. He was saying that whenever it involves the kernel level fixes, this is something that has to be updated with software update and a regular standard update. Other things can be patched with the rapid security response updates, but not this. And this is why we needed to get the full update. The build version for 13.3.1 is 22E261, and this is definitely a couple versions more than the previous 13.3 update, so there was definitely some testing going on there between releases, and there was no beta release for the 13.3.1 update. How much space does the Mac OS have before and after the 13.3.1 update? And you can see in here on 13.3, Mac OS was showing that it was 13.37 gigabytes. And after installing the 13.3.1 update, we have 13.43 gigabytes. So there definitely was a change, but very small. And we shouldn't see too big of a swing in a small security update like this, but it's gonna be around the same. So they didn't save any space, but added a couple of pieces here. Now let's look over the firmware updates and the bridge OS updates for the T2 chip on Intel Macs. I always go over this because it's nice to be able to confirm whether you're on the correct version of firmware or if it was updated or wasn't updated. And this is a perfect example to show that Apple does not rev the firmware every single time there's an update. For this security update, they did not need to touch anything firmware level wise. And it was the same version as macOS Ventura 13.3. For the OS loader version, it is also the same as 13.3. And for the Intel T2 bridge OS updates, there was not updated and is the same version as macOS Ventura 13.3. Even though this was a small update, Apple did release a full installer for the 13.3.1 update, and they released an Apple Silicon M1 M2 IPSW restore file that you'll be able to use to restore. And this is always great that they do this because when we build machines, we want them to be fully secure before they even leave the building. Or when you're building a fresh machine, even at your house, you wanna be able to be secure right out of the box without having to install another security update to get all these important patches before you begin using the machine. I also updated the Mac OS Safari download page that I have here to include direct links to the Monterey Safari download and the Mac OS Big Sur 16.4 downloads. 
Now, in my view, this update is more security based. And this is a big one because remember with Apple's security notes, we are looking for some very specific pieces in here. To tell us how important the update is. Keep in mind, Apple is not going to go through all the work to create an update, test it internally and release it a week later after a huge update, unless it's a big deal. And it is, and we can see it from the text right on this page. This app, may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. And there's one here for the IO Surface Accelerator and WebKit for Safari. And you can see here from Donica that he posted that this was the team from the Google Threat Analysis Group. And he's super proud of the team here and everyone who helped with this investigation. Today, Apple published an emergency update for all iPhones. And this is included for Mac OS because if you look at that CVE 206, it matches over here to 2062. So that also affects Ventura. And look how he's calling it an emergency update. That's how we know really quickly here. This is a very important update and I recommend installing it as soon as you can. If you want to wait a little bit just to make sure that there's no issues, that's fine. But this is my recommendation to get this going pretty quickly here. Now, Apple also patched, as I mentioned earlier, Safari 16.4.1 for macOS Big Sur and macOS Monterey. There's only one piece here that is patched, and it is that 205 WebKit issue that is right here. Now, keep in mind, it's unknown whether the 28206 issue for iOS Surface Accelerator is in macOS Monterey, but Apple has already said in the past that they only keep the latest version of Mac OS fully secure. Sometimes with architecture issues, they do not release patches for Big Sur and Monterey. And then this is a case where it's, that's a possibility. So again, if you wanna stay on the latest, safest version of Mac OS, Ventura is your key. Now let's go over the changes and fixes in the 13.3.1 update. Apple took the time to put a couple important fixes in this update and not just security releases. Now, while you could argue the first one's not a big deal, but the second one is. So let's go over that first. Auto unlock for your Mac with your Apple Watch may not work. And already as soon as the 13.3 update came out, there was people complaining about this. And I didn't catch it because I didn't I don't use Apple Unlock with my Apple Watch. And as soon as those people installed it, they noticed that the feature did not work to unlock like their Mac and there was a bunch of workarounds like oh sign out of Apple ID and do all this other things and it's just good to see that this issue was fixed in only a week's time to be able to help those people get that and the second one is is that we went over in the 13.3 update there was a bunch of new emojis and for the pushing hands emoji click on there and you can pick different skin tones so that's fixed in the 13.3.1 update now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 scores we're using Geekbench 6 instead of Geekbench 5 like we did in the past and when we previously ran this on 13.3 we had a 23.63 single core and a 85.75 on the multi-core for 13.3.1 we got a 23.64 and an 86.18 very close to what we got in the previous update now let's talk about open core legacy patcher for your unsupported Mac using Mac OS Ventura. And it says they have to update to 13.3.1. So first of all, there hasn't been any major issues reported for the 0.6.2 update and 13.3.1 so far, because there's only a couple changes. So there wasn't any major changes going on to the operating system at the time. Not to say there won't be any in the future, but so far so good because our demonstration Mac here for this video is a 2013 Mac Pro. It's running Mac OS Ventura 13.3.1. 13.3.1 and we are running open core legacy patcher 0.6.2 and there was no issues now i was working on a video for 0.6.2 update and i just finished it only for this 13.3.1 update to come out so i'm going to go back in edit it and then i'm going to release that after this video but again everything's looking good so make sure though really quick if you want to jump to this update really fast make sure you downloaded the latest version of open core legacy patcher application build and install open core to your internal hard drive first reboot then install the post root patches and then you're ready for to go for the update after the update installs install the post root patches again and you should be good to go let me know if you got any questions in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video thanks